What is going on with everybody, man? It is your boy, Eric, a.k.a. Young God, coming to you live in the Pink Dungeon, giving it to you real raw rugged. And I am back in here with the best albums of 2020 list. A lot of people have been asking me for this, and we're going to get right into it. Uh, honestly, nobody's asked for this. So I'm not going to lie. Not a single soul said, hey, Eric, when you're dropping that uh, 2020 best albums list. Not a single soul said that. I just lied, and I don't know why I did that. <laughs> so I just had to call myself out on that. But... Before I get into this list, I do want to make one remark because I know a lot of people are going to be on my head about this. The ranking of these albums, I'm not going to lie, bro. I suck at ranking, rating things. I, I'm, that's just not my forte. That's why I don't put a number rating at the end of my album's review. That's just, I don't know, I just don't work that way. Like, literally, this list could change after I'm done. I'd be like, you know, this is actually number five. This is actually number two. So, you know, uh, take this list what you want. But at the time I made this list, this is how I feel. So right now, at whatever time it is, Saturday after Christmas, this is how I feel about the albums that came out in 2020. So without any further ado, let's get right into it, man. Number 23. This could have been on my underrated albums list, but I didn't put it on there. Kent James, Buddy, Jank Tape, Volume 1. I think she love me. Uh, I think she love me. If you don't know who Kent James is, he's a member of Overdose, uh, a group that I think was ahead of their time. They were featured on ASAP Rocky debut album, if their name looks familiar to you. They have a lot of good hits. Kent James is basically, I would say, one of the main reasons that you hear Childish Gambino sounding like that in that pro-black type of movement that he's been uh, kind of talking about because Kent James has been like that. Uh, he sings like that. And Kent James even told me in one of our interviews, I interviewed him twice, that him and Childish Gambino talk about a lot of black issues and they hung around a lot. They hung around each other a lot. So I think that Childish Gambino took a lot from that and kind of, you know, molded into his own style, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, and you got Buddy, uh, the West Coast guy man buddy been around for a little minute and they come around and get jank tape volume two it's a very very good album bro if outside was open this would have been played i feel like a lot on the west coast because not that it has a west coast sound but they are west coast based artists i think this would have been played in a lot of places and i'm just mad that it wasn't man i, I think she loved me to burberry party i got a burberry party like it's so every song on here hits man and uh, shout out to ken james man also fun fact about him the grandson of Louis Farrakhan, which is crazy. So, yeah, shout out to Kent, man. Uh, go check that out. It's really good. And we go to 22, Young Thug and Chris Brown, Slime and B. I really love this album, bro. I don't know why. I didn't think this album would be that good, man. But just as soon as the intro hit with the... Say it love, say it twice. Are you my bitch? And call my shots, yeah. <laughs> bro, as soon as I heard that, she ain't getting that wet. <laughs> hey, man, I was like, yo, this is crazy, man. Then they go to the, you got the city girls in the city, man, the animal. Then you got, bro, literally, even the songs with just Chris Brown, with Chris Brown and E4 and all them songs right there, bro, hard, man. The last song with Young Thug and Future, oh my gosh, bro. This is such a consistent album. I dislike Major 9 music so much, and he somehow made this album even more better. That's how I knew. I was like, you know, this is one of the ones right here. So if you just want a fun album, man, both of those albums back-to-back -back are just two fun collab albums. Those could be ranked either way. But yeah, if you're looking for just a fun collab album, just turn up to House for Fun. Those are two to go to. And then we're going to switch a little directions with number 21, Currency and... The moves I got the Harry Fraud, the Outrunners. This was a super duper good project. Currency. I feel like Currency is just a very consistent person. But on this album, I feel like he stepped it up a little bit. Like his rapping abilities. He was hopping in flows and pockets I've never heard him do. And he's been rapping since forever, since the 90s. So the fact he's still elevating and evolving on this in 2020 when he's been rapping since the 90s that is insane to me so shout out to currency for just stepping it up yeah i thought that was really cool i feel like him harry fraud alchemist they bring the best out of currency so i love the fact they hooked up with harry fraud for this one golden chrome is stupid man love that song that's such a beautiful song that's like a song that he's gonna play for his son when he gets older and he's like wow i love you dad <laughs> that's one of them i love you dad type of moments right there it's so good jim jones came with a crazy verse and I, do i have to talk about harry fraud harry fraud is one of the best producers of 2020 he has not dropped a bad beat from this to the jack harlow album to the action bronson album like literally he has been on a run and this is no exception so shout out to them for coming through outrunners really really good mixtape or really, really good out mixtape whatever it is it's good um and then we go to uh i'll say track number 20 i'm so used to doing album reviews album number 20 
Preservation, Eastern Medicine, Western Illness. Now, DJ Preservation is known mostly for being most deaf producer, just being a guy who was producing a lot in that scene back in the day. And he has hooked up with the best underground artists on his, on his album. Now, you got Navy Blue on here, Makami, Ka, Quail Chris, uh, AG from Digging in the Crates. Who else is on here? Um, literally, uh, so many people. I'm probably forgetting people. Your old Droog is on here. There's a lot of under Rock Marciano. Literally, anybody that's popping from the underground right now, they are on this album. Such a good album. It's kind of a concept album. And you can read that from the title, Eastern Medicine, Western Illness. Kind of a lot of snippets from like Chinese and just uh, Eastern uh, type of like samples that are in the background of their rapping over uh kind of vocal samples talking about eastern medicine is a very interesting album and i think one of the better well rapped albums of the year with everybody from the underground on there so if you're a big fan of underground hip-hop or any of those artists that i named this is the tape for you and then we go to uh number 19 man hot boy the hot cut fan on bro I, it was kind of a hard decision because I was like, bro, do I like Cut the Fan On or do I like Double O Baby better? I'm going to go with Cut the Fan On, bro. I don't know, maybe because Cut the Fan On, it came out a little early in the year and I had more time to sit with it. But man, bro, when I heard YG's, that was the first song I heard by him. And I was like, oh, he one of the ones. YG's was hard, man. What do you say? Sometimes I feel like the only thing that hit me is the bad. I'm fell in love with Cash. Bro, I love that song. So the intro starts it off hard. Then you got now, Plies has one of the best lines of the year. I had to learn a whole fucking buster for a bag. And I was like, oh my gosh. I, me, me and Hopper talked about it in our complex interview. I was like, bro, that's one of my favorite bars of the year. You got now on there. You got, uh, of course, you got Don't Need Time. That's his biggest single still to this day. Bro, so many good songs. He's a Florida rapper if you don't know who Hot Boy is. As you can tell by the hair that I got in like little album cover right there, you can tell he's a Florida rapper. And he's just, he's a really good rapper, man. He's really good. He gives that that Florida feel. Like, if you're a Florida boy, you could tell he probably was eating a public sub before he did a lot of these songs. He probably had a lanyard on. He probably had some Sperry's on. He probably had a Sperry's with basketball shorts on at that. Like, it's a real Florida album, and it's good to see Florida dudes winning, man. So, shout out to my boy, Hot Boy, man. Thundercat. It is what it is. Man, this is a really good album bro i reviewed this and i loved it loved it listened to it a lot this year man um the 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 it is what it is song uh that that's fire uh the song with ty dollar and um and what's your boy named lil b man it is what it is bye bye for now man that song is beautiful man and then you got ty dollar come on with the in the light things will never be the same things will never be the same again man the way he dun, 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 dun. Yesterday, yesterday, man, he was going crazy on that. Keep your head above water, man. He was in his bag. Then you got a little beat coming in with his verse, fire. I, I love that song a lot, man. You got the I Love Lewis Cole song. That was a really random song with a random feature of somebody I like. So that was cool to see. But yeah, I mean, if you know Thundercat, man, bass player, singer, you get Thundercat. Just a weird, very off the wall album. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A lot of jazz elements in here. And just him being weird. Like, I feel like most people know who Thundercat is when I see his videos. So you get just another good Thundercat album, man. He's solid. He's going to be consistent every time we drop something. <laughs> And if we go to G Herbo, PTSD, number 17. Man, this is such a good album. I really wish um, Rotten With It, that's on the deluxe album, was on the freaking regular album because that song is amazing. But everybody knows who this is, man. It came from the drill scene, matured. And, yo, he is, I would say, the best technical rapper from that drill scene i think that's safe to say he has his own style nobody from that drill scene raps like him chief keith uh recipes duck von recipes uh dirt none of them rap like herb herb has his own thing like very very different even that i think it's song called the statement he just dropped when he was rapping over the uh the i really mean it ah. that 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 nigga went crazy on that song but to this album a lot of good rapping on here, man. To feelings, that was crazy. Uh, what, what else he had on here, man? From the intro, where he rapping over the Dynasty soundtrack. I mean, that's just crazy, bro. He was in his bag this entire album, man. Uh, in this bit was crazy. I love that song. That is a song I can tell. If that song came out in like two thousand. 
six niggas would be getting stumped out to that song in the club, bro. You from Jacksonville, you know about Plush. That is a, a song niggas would have almost damn near died listening to that song in the club. When that song came up, man, that was, I know that would have been crazy. If outside was open, hey, Chicago is already a dangerous place. If that song come in the club, I feel like niggas would be ready to stump somebody head in when that song come on. Love that song. I love Herbo, man. He's just a really good rapper. And uh, shout out to him. 21 Savage, Metro Boomin', Savage Mode. I reviewed this on Complex. Go check that out if you want to. And, uh, yeah, man, this is a very cinematic masterpiece, I feel like. Uh, Metro Boomin', they, Metro, him and Metro Boomin' crafted a movie within the album to me with the Morgan Freeman uh, freaking vocals, with just the way it's so thematic, the way it sounds like a horror movie. It sounds like if Jason Kruger was chasing you down with, with, with I don't know, it's not like Jason Kruger chasing you down with, <laughs> with, with some true religion jeans on and some black air force that's what that sound like man it's not like a hood scary movie and i'm all here for that so shout out to them too for putting that two together and rest in peace love if you're familiar with like the slums movement and that underground movement don't that sound like a mic beat that like, don't that sound like something michael wrapped over i love that song a lot but anyway very very good album everybody knows about that i felt not talking about it too much savage mode 2 is super duper good I knew we go to 15. Uh, this is where I started struggling. I wrote that down. This is where I started struggling to rate these albums and where they get ranked at. So, hey, there is all up in there at this point. But West Side Gun, Pray for Paris, man. man I, I love this, bro. There's so many uh, freaking Griselda albums that came out this year. And I was like, it could have been a whole bunch of them on there. But I just wanted to keep it to one. So, spoiler alert. There's no more Benny, no Conway on here. I know their albums are great, man. The one with Hit Boy, Lulu, the the the, the debut solo with, with, with Conway. Like I know, man. But something about Pray for Paris is just different to me, man. Just the way it come on, man. With the I slam you on your neck like Bruno San Martino, the Bino, the Reno, getting lit in the casino. I shot three niggas in a row and yelled bingo like <laughs> my gosh bro the way he was styling like he has so much just style man like like the swag just oozing out of this young man bro he got the swag on lock man because his voice could be annoying to a lot of people he's even on like a la semi I, I i hate the way he's doing that a la semi be king. like that is so annoying to me but other than that the way his voice is like i said it could easily be written off as super annoying but he put the sauce on it bro he got the sauce on it to make it hard man so it's it's all hail to the, 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 the god himself man i love this album then you got 500 dollar ounces i mean come on bro that song is crazy, man. From 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 his verse to Freddie verse. What he said, uh, I got skeleton in my closet. Enough and any honestly, call me Fred DiBiase. The garage is a million dollars. Like, oh my gosh, bro. What he say? I take a load off and take a load in. It's load management. Like he, bro. Freddie was talking, and then you go to Rock Marciano, man, bro. Rock Marciano was one of the best pins to ever live, man. The 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 the, the what do you say with the, with the gelatin in the medicine tablet? Uh, I he say uh, I get on the beat and bleed. You you what do you say? I get I get on the beat and bleed. You just breeze like a, like a, like a tumbleweed and and, and bleeds. I don't know. He bro, he was talking, mama me, it's just going crazy on this song. And there's so many instances where I could just talk about how people are going crazy on this entire album. But I could be talking about that the entire time. That This is just the one that stuck with me like the most from Griselda. Shout out to the boys. And then we go to Nick Frady's number 14, Mordo Cavallo. Now, this is an album that I'm, like I said, once again, I know nobody knows this album. I talk about this on my most underrated albums of the year list. Literally, I found this like on accident. I followed the, the record label that that he signed under. It's called Park the Van. And because I found like another one of their bands a long time ago. I just followed them and kept up with their releases. And I heard this, and I was like, bro, who is this? He sounds like John Lennon, but in 2020. That's what he sounds like. He sounds like a lost Beatles member. And I feel like if you like that type of music, this is what it is for you. And his pen is so good, man. Listen to Flowers. If you want to be sold on him, listen to Flowers and tell me this isn't a beautiful song, man. The flowers in the wind stays on the like a Listen to this, bro. If you like that type of description that I'm giving you, which you should, man. Like, if you like music, this is some, like, Lost Beatles type music right here in 2020. And I'm all here for it, man. Shout out to Nick Frades. Used to be the photographer at Thrasher. I've been keeping up with him and just looking up. Like, you know, who's this guy? And I really like this album a lot. So, yeah, tap in with Nick Frades, man. Solid dude. 
And then we go to number 13, man. Brent Fias, man. F the world. Why not, man? Let's just F it, man. Raw. No condom, dudes. Have fun. F the world. Brent Fias, bro. He's he's been a dude that I've been I've been peeping since he like just early, early on. Google Sonder reviewed the Sonder into EP. Like YouTube that and see who's the only person to review that. Me. Three years, like three, four years ago, bro. So I've been big on him since then. I've been super duper big on this dude. He's such a talented artist. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've heard this. Like all the girls that I know love Brent. All the dudes I know love Brent. Like he one of them dudes he can cross over because he be talking like some thug type stuff. But he also talk love type stuff. So he's like a thug love like kind of throwback to the Jodeci days. You know what I'm saying? Like they was thugging, but it was still. <laughs> Oh yeah! <clears throat> oh, my voice is cracked crazy right now. I couldn't do it, but you know how Jody CB, he kind of bringing it back to them days. So I like that. I like that a lot, man. And I don't have to talk about this album too much because, like I said, everybody has been playing this album to death, man. You know, rehabbed all the songs, you know. So yeah, shout out to uh, Brent, man. It came through. Tame Impala, The Big Rush. I'm about to do something crazy. Man, there's so many songs on here, bro, from Glimmer to that to uh to, to, to Borderline. Borderline is crazy, man. If I, dun, 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 I love you, I want to Bro, it's so many songs on here that are insane, bro. And I know a lot of people actually was like, yeah, this is like an okay album, but man. This album stuck with me heavy throughout the entire year. So I get why some people may prefer like Lonerism or the other albums, Currents and stuff like that, which all great albums. But man, I don't want, I don't, I'm not in the business of comparing. I just like what I like. And as a standout solo release, this is good. This is really, really good, man. Good enough to be number 12. So shout out to Tame Impala, man. Shout out to Mr. Kevin. And then we go to number 11, King Cruel Man Alive. Now, wow, man. This is crazy, bro. I keep describing all these albums as crazy, but they are. I don't know how else to describe them, man. They're crazy albums, man. When you have Stoned Again on an album, what am I supposed to say? This is terrific sonically. This is actually metamorphosically a little bit of stagnant or staccato, as they would say. Uh, I would love for it to be a little bit of dick or shin. Like, what, what, what do you want me to use, bro? You want me to use, like, the, the words I learned when I was in Symphonic Band to describe this King Cruel album? Because I'm not. <laughs> I'm just going to say it's crazy. It's sanity, man. When you hear stoned again, that's the first word that should come to your mind, bro. When you, I'm stoned again, I'm high again, bro. That is a crazy song with the with the guitar, with his voice. Stoned again is my favorite song on here by a landslide, just because that is one of them ones right here. I feel like stoned again may be a top three King Cruel song ever. Ever and come on, King, King Crew got a crazy discography. So for me to say that, that means a lot, man. And this whole album, like from, from top to bottom, he does a little bit of jazzy stuff uh, on, on 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 Underclass. I think that's the name of the song, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, like kind of towards the end of the album, he tries a lot of crazy things on this album, and they all work for me, man. I feel like this is one of his. I would say he does a lot of things that are inaccessible. I was gonna say this is like his most inaccessible album. I don't know if I can say that, but I am going to say that because I feel like the last album, like a song like uh, Biscuit Town, that's a pretty accessible song. But a lot of these songs, man, they're they're pretty harsh. And hey, I like to say pretty harsh because I have albums on here that are a little bit more harsh than that. But still, this is he tried some stuff on here and I feel like he succeeded and I loved it, man. Shout out to King Cruel. Number 10, top 10. Let's get it, man. Sada Baby, Part of Your Bounty 2. Come on, bro. One of the best rappers alive. Do I have to keep talking about this? Sada Baby, I've literally talked about him all year. I talked about him all 2019. Do I got to do it all 2021 too? I don't think so. The man finally blew up. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for him to blow up. And he did with the whole lot of Chopper song. But man, Barty Your Bounty 2, bro. So many, so many bars, so many lines. I'm honestly not going to talk about it that much just because I've reviewed it. I've talked about it outside of the review. Like, I've talked about this album literally all year. So I'm not going to do that. But what I will do is tell you to listen to this album because Sada Baby is one of the best rappers alive right now. Super duper good. And then we go to somebody who dropped, man, I, I think an even better rap album. And that's saying a lot because you know how much I love Sada Baby. And that's Stove God Cook's Reasonable Drought. Now, this is on a lot of people's top tens. I was not expecting to see that. I'm so happy for him. I was not expecting to see all these big companies have him in their top 10, top 30, whatever. I wouldn't expect him to see, see him on any list. But to see that... 
that warm my heart, man. Love this man's music, bro. Stove God and Rock Marciano cooked together a, a doggone near classic, man. So many crazy lines, man. What that nigga say? That nigga said, uh, that, that nigga said he shot dice on a slave ship. Just wild, insane bars, bro. On that, on that, uh, second to last West Side Gun album, that nigga said that, uh, he, he need to have a versus with, uh, what's, what's, what's the nigga name who we cooking to be like, bam, I forget his name. This is, I know his last name started with an L. You know who I'm talking about. The bam, man. That was a crazy bar. Just so many crazy bars. Like if you want to hear somebody rap, rap, this is the album for you. But he also sings. He's so weird. He's such a different artist. Cause he's not just like this rappers, rappers, which he is, but he does like, I always have rich nigga dreams. My young boy got the tag with the bean, like stuff like that. That's not something that every just rap rapper is doing. Just singing out of nowhere. He is rapping, rapping, and also singing, singing. So it is such a weird blend to hear because it's different. But, man, it is one of the most unique albums that you will hear this year in the rap realm for sure. So, yeah, check out Stove God Cooks if you haven't already, man. Reasonable Drought, super duper good. And then we go to Jeff Rosenstock, No Dream, bro. Punk, punk rock album of the year. I think so. This guy's great, bro. This guy's unstoppable, man. When he dropped this, it was a surprise album. It surprised me, surprised everybody else. I was not expecting it. He was doing instagram live uh like little concerts because quarantine just uh happened and bro he was in his bag the entire time on this album man bro beach uh uh um, a monday at the beach is still crazy bro it's a monday at the beach monday at the beach monday at the beach monday at the beach if the what bro that's crazy ohio turnpike it's crazy airbnb is crazy like bro he was in his bag from 1 to 13 i think it's 13 or 14 tracks on this album i didn't write it down I don't know, but either way, bro, it's good punk music. It, Jeff Rosenstock is one of the greatest artists to ever live. I, I'll be keep saying it, bro, and it's crazy. I just discovered him last year, but I've literally listened to his discography about a hundred times since then. I've been hooked onto his music for a year straight. Love this dude. 2021, I pray I can get an interview with Jeff Rosenstock, man. If I get the Jeff Rosenstock and the James Blake interview, I think I can like halfway retire at that point because they're just amazing. So shout out to Jeff Rosenstock, man, my favorite punk album of the year. And then we go to number seven, Eve's Tumor, Heaven for a Tortured Mind. Shout out to Florida once again. Broward, Broward, Broward. I'm not Broward, of course, but shout out to Broward. And, yeah, he came through, man. That I mean, come on, bro. Eve's Tumor is one of them ones, bro. He's, 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 the, the nigga, one of them ones, man. Like, the way it starts off with uh, with, with, with the, what was it, gospel? The, the, was it gospel for a century? I, I honestly forget the name of the title. I didn't write any of this down. But, hey, you know what I'm talking about. The dun 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 Man, he was going, bro, he was going crazy on this entire album, man, from that to, to, to kerosene, bro, the entire album is wild, superstars, I don't know how to describe this music some really crazy stuff on here. Uh, he, he pulled it back on a lot of the songs, but a lot of songs, he's like, you know, I'm just going to go full Eve's tumor. That's what I expect, man. That's what I want from him. So, yeah, this is, man, this is his best album, I feel like, to date. And the last album was crazy as well. But, man, he somehow outdid himself. So, shout out to Eve's tumor for this one. Super duper good album. And then we go to Freddie Gibbs and Alchemist, Alfredo, number six. Man, freaking nominated for a Grammy and maybe will win it. What is going on in 2020? 2020 is a ridiculous year. I would have never expected this kid nominated for a Grammy just because, you know, the Grammys are known for, you know, messing people over. And you wouldn't think this would be there. But the fact it is, all praise is due to the best producers to ever touch the freaking board, which is Alchemist himself. And Freddie Gibbs, one of the illest rappers out right now. That flow on on uh the, the freaking his flow is undefeated man from from, from the one on baby ish to 1985 to microphone check one two mic checker bro the way he rapped on that with the gangland shit fuck around and get gangland hit that's one of my favorite flow that is my favorite flow of 2020 i'm gonna say that right now over it there's no flow that was better than his on that gangland shit fuck around and get gangland hit that was crazy his flow in that entire song was wild but yeah, man, another album that I feel like I don't got to talk about that much because it's literally nominated for a Grammy. Everybody's talking about it. I'm not surprised on everybody's list. Shout out to Freddie. 
And then we go to number five, which I didn't review. I wanted to review this. I just haven't. I still might review it. Who knows? But soccer mom, soccer mommy, color theory, man, bro. This is one of my. I can listen. I've heard this album so many times by doing homework, just chilling. It is such an easy album to listen to, man. The way it starts off with Bloodstream, bro. She has such this adorable voice. It's a pop album, and literally every song hits man i i want to review this album man there's so many good songs on here bro it's like it's a very adorable album a uh, little white girl soccer mommy i'm uh, pretty sure you can tell by the name there's no uh i'm pretty sure she's black soccer mommy she's not even old i don't think she got a kid she's not even a mommy yet but you get it man this is a very very good pop album adorable i love it. it it is an album that you could play back to back to back so if you always want like an adorable pop album this is the one for you it made my top five top five so there you go right there and then we go to an album that I talked about a lot on here, Fiona Apple, number four, Fetch the Boat Cutters. Fetch the Boat Cutters. Man, when you got a song like Ladies on here, it, it, it really should be top one. At this point, I'm just making up a list, bro. Like, this, like I, I'm just throwing numbers out there, man. This could be number one for all I care, bro. Ladies, bro. Ladies, 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 ladies. <laughs> bro, that sounds like a song of Coal Miner's Daughter, which is a movie that my mom has played in this household at least 3,000 times. So when I hear this, that brings me to the mind of that. Shamika, I mean, come on, man. Fetch the boat cutters. Look at that rag of his. Cosmo knots. Come on, bro. Good God. <laughs> what she say? Okay, that's right. Left, right. Come on, man. Cause you and I could be like a couple of Cosmo knots, bro. This is such well produced, sung, written album. One of the best of the year. That's why it's top four, man. Shout out to Fiona. And then we go to the top three, man. Uh, three. Kia. Forever Your Girl, best R&B album of the year, man. It's it's a very different R&B album. If you don't know who Kia is, imagine if Wu Tang put out Thirty Six Chambers. And it was like, "What's show? We need a we 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 need a woman in the group shun." It would be Kia because no, she does not rap or or sing like in a greedy stance. It's very pretty and beautiful, but the way her beats sound, the way they're mixed, they're so kind of muddy it's it's like a beautiful voice over these distorted 36 chambers type beats like it literally sounds like rizzo mixed these back in 92 and it is such a crazy unique sound the way that she could do something like um like like i don't know uh freaking every nigga's a star like the beat will sound very very just like she made in a basement with rizza and and, and raekwon scratching his balls or something like it's so dirty but the way she's singing is beautiful man with the i wrestle with demons and then lead them crazy stuff uh and yeah man this is my favorite r&b album of the year so if you want a good r&b album that's different because it's 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 like a dichotomy with this beautifulness and this ruggedness this is the one for you. And then we go to number two, man. Uh, the second best rap album of the year. You guess, can you guess what it is? It's Ka, Descendants of Cain. One of the best well-written albums of the year. If you don't know Ka, one of the greatest rappers to ever touch a microphone. That's not hyperbole. He's, leg he's legitimately one of the best rappers of all time. He's very big in the underground scene. He used to be a firefighter. Every line is potent. Every line is potent, bro. He said, what did he say? He said, I made it out the belly of the beast with my cut like a cesarean. Like, you're going to get stuff like that. This imagine if, imagine if a black man grew up in Gotham City and he was fighting crime and living and seeing the most goriest, grotesque stuff and he made a rap album about it. This is what this is. This sounds like he grew up in Gotham and he was just seeing the most ridiculous things and he wrote a rap album about it. He has this narrator voice. He could narrate a, a movie and it would sound fine and fantastic. He has one of those voices and the just instrumentation around his whole album and the beats and everything. It sounds like he's looking over Gotham and he's just rapping about it. And it's crazy. It's one of the more unique albums. Descendants of Cain being about Abel and Cain from the Bible. What do you say? Uh, brothers killing brothers. Descendants of Cain. You're going to get lines like that. Every bar is potent. And yeah, man, one of the best rappers alive. Kyle gave us Descendants of Cain this year. And hey, I thank him for it. And we got a Rock Marciano feature, which was amazing on this album. So yeah, man. Um, shout out to him. And then we go to number one. My favorite rap album of the year. Do I have to tell you guys? I feel like you already know. It's freaking Navy Blue, Ada Irin. Now, a little controversy maybe. Navy Blue just dropped the album. Yes, I am going to review that. I am going to talk about it. But it just came out. It literally just came out. 
I, I couldn't put it on here because I'd rather put that on a 2021 thing because it still resonated with me. I had all year for Ada Irene to resonate with me, and it did. And, and I feel like this is a, another album I don't have to talk about, but if you haven't heard about it, Navy Blue is a guy, Sage, model, uh, actor, rapper, professional skateboarder, signed to Supreme, signed to Converse, super duper talented brother. Um, he sounds like he taps in with the ancestors before he go make a song. He wore them type of rappers, very spiritual, very just awakening the mind. And every every song on here, man, it it, it sounds like he tapped in with, with with the kings and queens before us, man. He made music, bro. Somebody once said to me, said if you ain't making music for your ancestors, what you really doing? And that's what Navy's doing right now, man. He's super duper talented. He has the best album of the year. Forget rap album. And I'm not going to lie, spoiler alert, the thing he put out this year might even be better than this. So he somehow has put out two best rap albums of the year. It's, bro, I'm telling you, go listen to Navy Blue. Um, this is very different from the one he put out this year. Uh, Songs of Sage, by the way, if you want to go check that out, it's on his band camp. It should be le releasing the streaming in a couple more weeks. But yeah, I love this dude right here. I interviewed him, reviewed his album, reviewed multiple things from him. This is this is one of my fa this is my favorite album this is my favorite album bro he's super good so that's it go listen to this if 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 you want to connect with your ancestors man you know what I'm saying bro tap in with Sage tap in with Navy Blue so till next time say what I mean I mean what I say haters gonna hate players gonna play you guys holla at your bonnet man.